Comics have this interesting, unique part of themselves with panels. I think it's unlike any other visual medium, where the format and shape of the images we get in sequences are constantly changing. One panel might be large, one might be small, one might be long, one might be thin, and through that you end up building rhythms to a page. Because the page itself is also a unique thing. Not only are images placed within boxes, they're organised within the larger unit of the page too. So this episode, with the help of Steve Orlando, Raul Allen, Patricia Martin, Borja Pindado, and Saida Temafonte's Wonder Woman, I wanted to talk a bit about how panel sizes and positions can infer a lot of story information through design. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. So most of what I'm going to show you here is going to be empty pages, because there's a lot of really interesting design work being done by Allen and Martin in their work, but also because in their work, everything still sticks to an underlying grid pattern, so I think it's much easier to see the comparisons of how the pages work because of that. Even the splash pages still have panel borders, and nothing jumps between panels or extends to the bleed, it's all very, very highly structured and controlled. So starting with the very first page of the comic, this is how it looks without any panel content. You know, it's a six panel page, it's split into four tiers. With their work, the tiers are usually built with a purpose on each tier, which is an important choice you've got in making comics. So here, in this instance, we can look at this page and already make a series of very simple and easy to notice assumptions. So it looks like a series of three images there, and then a three panel sequence at the bottom of the page, so I can assume that those first three images are potentially a little bit more contained, and the three images along the bottom tier are probably interacting with each other a little bit more. Probably shorter beats narratively, because they take up less space on the page, and therefore I'm going to assume they take up less time within the story. Or at least that they're less visually impactful moments. So before I reveal the page, I just want to mention something from Nick Susanis, who's the creator of the amazing Unflattening comic, and he's also a comics educator. And he has an exercise called Grids and Gestures, which I recommend you all check out, it's a lot of fun, which revolves around the idea of getting participants to draw the experience of a day on a single comic book page, but only using panels. The idea is that the panels themselves are expressing something, before we even get to the contents of the images within them. Susanis recommends that you could look at a panel, for example, as a unit of time, so therefore a longer panel would imply more time, a shorter panel would imply less time. And here you can see it very much on this page. Three individual moments, which are somewhat protected against each other, holding a little more weight, before you get the three panels that much more directly press against each other, likely containing a shorter moment of time in each. When we see that page fully, that's more or less what you get. The three panels we see first are all in the same location, around the ship, but they each hold a separate moment of conversation. The first sets up the fact that they're heading somewhere, the second panel tells us what they're heading towards and what to expect, and the third panel tells us some background on the camp. And in each of those panels, more than one person is talking, and they're saying more than one thing. Therefore, the time in those panels is a little bit longer than what we'll see in the bottom row, where it's really just one thing being said per panel. So you can feel the time and space actually takes up more time and space on the page. The row of three panels along the bottom contains that single moment of dialogue, as I said, with reaction shots nestled with each one. But really, it's the same point being made across that tier. Something's wrong. And these three panels could have been done in one, like the panels before, but by splitting them up, it creates a series of shorter, sharper beats in time, which narratively bounces off the rest of the page, and it also helps to set up the next page, which is this big splash image. Now, this isn't necessarily information that you're considering when you read, but it is there, and I think you do notice when something along the same tier has been split up like this. Because of the way the grid structure sections off parts of the page, it does directly change the way you take in the information. So, for another example, here's a page that has nine panels, two rows of four across the top, and then a much larger one at the bottom. So if you want, you can pause the video here, and you can make some quick notes about what the structure of this page says to you personally, and we can see if we match it based on what it says to me as well. Okay, so if you do want to do that, you can feel free to pause it now. But to me, a series of smaller panels suggests a series of smaller moments in time, similar to what happened on the first page. And I'm going to assume they play off of each other in some way, but smaller time seems to be the most relevant. The bigger panel reads like a culmination of that moment too, the bigger release that the smaller, more staccato elements are building up to. So maybe you have a similar response to me, but I think if we look at the approach being based on the size of the panels as the amount of time being used, a series of smaller panels is very much going to be a series of much smaller and more condensed moments. Let me know what you put down in the comments either way, but let's reveal this page and what we see is something kind of similar to that. Eight panels are almost like quick cuts in film, jumping back and forth between the people and Atlanta here. There's some particularly great things being done with the zooming in on the eye of Atlanta too, as the panels of the people around her get more and more crowded, and it's got that feeling of like claustrophobia sort of rising as the dead space in the panels gets less and less on both sides, before revealing the big image and the happy moment. 
So even with nothing in them, the panels look like they're moving at a more rapid pace, and Alan and Martin build that more by making the contents of the panel reflect that, and add to that experience, showing a real confidence in the knowledge of what their page design is intending to do. So one last proper example, here's a really really good page design. Because there's that one panel here that seems to stand out, both as a product of size and of its placement, and it's the middle panel. It's kind of like with the nine panel grid, you know, in a way where things tend to revolve around that central moment, here it feels the same. Nothing ousts it for size, and added to the fact that it's right smack bang in the middle of the page. There seems to be something about it. The other moments are split into two categories, so panels 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9 and 11 are all about the same size, and seem like kind of quick moments. Panels 2 and 10 have a little more gravitas, you know, a little more weight and a little more time allowed to them. If you know Alan and Martin's work, even without having seen this page, you could guess it's a single speech balloon in the smaller panels, and probably two speech balloons in the other panels, and that middle panel would have probably a few more. So when you reveal the page, obviously that's what you get, and of course I'm, I'm cheating a little bit because I've seen these pages before to make the episode, but all the information you get is pretty plainly there in just the grids and the panel layouts. There's a lot to infer specifically about time and space in these grids, and seeing which panels are allowed more room to breathe, and what their placement on the page says about that moment. It also shows the clever underlying rhythm that Alan and Martin place in their comics, something that gets even more hidden once the images are on the page. Something that gets even more hidden under the narrative once the images are on the page. But it shows the functioning cogs of the way they want the story to be ingested. I think Alan and Martin have one of the best senses for storytelling, and much of their work you'll read will feel punchy and orchestrated, because they build that structure very directly and purposefully under the work. It's not just about making the middle moment in this page the star of the scene, but it's about how everything else works around it. We've talked about feature panels in comics before on this show, but here everything is a feature, because none of it works without the rest. It's a great showcase for just how important an element of design can really be in comics, and how it can shape the entire reading experience without you ever even realizing. Thanks for watching. Strip Panel Naked continues to exist regularly because of the amazing support from the patrons who get access to years worth of exclusive writing and content. I'd love your support too, and you can click on the little patron link there. You can get me on Twitter at HassanOE and the Eisner nominated magazine I edit at panelxpanel.com. As always, hit subscribe and that notification bell to keep up to date with all the new episodes, and I'll see you next time.